Sorry, <laughs> aka Costume Kens, and welcome back to my YouTube channel where I take you behind the scenes of my latest cosplay creations. Today's video is hopefully going to be a thorough walkthrough of how I made this pink gingham dress from the Barbie movie. And I say gingham loosely, that's what people are calling it, but technically the fabric is buffalo plaid for your search query purposes. The state of the craft room right now is a little bit crazy. This is kind of what it looks like inside my brain. Let's have a see. Hello, we've gone back in time to April 2023, the day after the trailer released to get a little look at the behind the scenes plan because that's when I started making this outfit originally. This fabric is obviously our pink buffalo plaid fabric, gingham, whatever you want to call it. Polyester lining fabric. So here she is in all of her glory. The plan is to line both outfits. I know I just said both outfits, but this video is focusing only on the mini buffalo plaid dress, not the longer dress, but I was making them simultaneously. So this is what was happening in my brain. With this white fabric, it makes the colors look more saturated. So that's the plan. Just do everything and just line it with this. And I am notorious for not lining things and not knowing how to line things. So this is gonna be a step forward in my sewing journey. A little side quest, if you will. Learn how to line things. I did record a video in the like chaotic state that I was in when this fabric came on the day that the trailer dropped. So I'll just show you that right here. But the most exciting thing just happened. And let me tell you about it. I'm sitting at my desk, I'm doing my work. I see the Barbie trailer has dropped. It's April 4th. I ordered this fabric two or three weeks ago. I get a notification from UPS. The fabric has arrived. I'm watching the trailer. I see not one, but two dresses that can use this fabric. And I based this whole, whole decision, this whole decision on a 0.5 second clip from the original teaser that we got in December. So, let's turn this into something. Ah! Is my hair really staticky? I just got shocked. We're channeling that raw, chaotic, creative energy in something that we can manage and, and wrangle in to make these dresses. Okay, thanks for staying along for that long intro and story time, but now we're gonna actually make the dress. So I just took a muslin fabric to start and I'm gonna figure out how I wanna do the pinning and the draping, which I didn't end up really being necessary because working with the buffalo plaid fabric is just like using fabric graph paper. So I did most of my measurements that way, but I just wanted to be safe and did a little bit of a mock-up first to see what the general shapes would be and line that out and count out the squares, etc. I was constantly looking at reference pictures of Margot in this outfit as I was making this and using the grid pattern to figure out how many squares her dress had across and how many mine should have to have the same fit and the same seam lines. Then I'm taking it off my mannequin and making sure the lines are very crispy and very straight and all the boxes are going to line up. So I'm just using a straight edge and a pencil, drawing out that seam that I wanna make and then ironing it down flat before taking it to my sewing machine and then putting in the final seam. Then I take it back over to my mannequin and put the lining fabric over it. I'm just going to be trying to line up the seams and pin them into place, then just going to sew that on the sewing machine and then sew these two pieces together. So I took my pink fabric and my lining fabric and I'm just going to be very careful to line up where I want the seams to be. I'm doing it right sides together and pinning it. And then I'm just going to be sewing along the top line there. You can see I faintly drew in the line where I want to trace in pencil. And then I'm just going to be flipping that inside out and doing a special lining stitch to make sure that the white lining doesn't roll over to the front. Then I made two straps using your run of the mill spaghetti strap method and I'm going to be attaching them to those two little spots that I left at the top for the strap attachment area. I secure those down with a couple of stitches and then turn it inside out and there should be a seamless, very nice edge. And because I'm taking my lining side quest very seriously, I want it to be extra structured and extra crispy. So I'm just ironing it down and putting some clips in place because I'm not going to be doing a top stitch over it. I just want it to be doing what it's supposed to do based on the lining techniques that I used. All right, checking in. This is what the front is looking like. It's, 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 it's working, but it did take me three tries to do this, which was very frustrating, but now I have all of these. I have like, I have two other bodices that are not it, but this is it. So now we have to move forward. I'm making the back. I know I just showed you this, but I wanted to take a couple seconds to show how perfectly 
the grid is lined up. I had to undo this seam like four times just to get it right, but it needs a moment for itself. All right, anyway, back onto the back of the dress. I'm going to be sketching out the heart, and you can see I'm just using pencil because this is gonna be the inside, and it's light enough that you won't see it when I fold it through. Uh, but anyways, I have the swoop in the back that she has, and I'm just drawing out the heart shape, and I'm gonna be stitching this over and flipping it inside out. I very, very carefully cut out the center of the heart, and then I'm going to be doing these little like notches to make sure that the curves fold in correctly. And then I'm just going to flip that inside out and iron it down. No top stitch on this because I want it to be very crispy and perfectly lined. Then I tried a bunch of different ways to get the seam above the heart to be like the heart is and the front seam is, but that just wasn't possible. So I ended up having to top stitch it, but it's not that noticeable and the hair covers it anyways. With that figured out, I attached the straps to the back and then I had to very carefully cut the back because this is where it's going to open and I'm going to put a little button closure and I'm just cutting right into the bottom point of that heart. Very scary. Now we're moving on to making the skirt portion. I know if this was a true 50s play suit, the skirt would swap out. If I would do this again, maybe I would do that and I would attach the top right to the undershorts, but I made it like a dress tunic situation. So this is just what we're going with. You can choose to make it how you want. So anyways, you've just seen me use the lining fabric that I cut into a skirt shape as a guide for my buffalo plaid cut and now I'm going to be taking this up a little bit and being very careful with my adjustments because it can get really short really fast so I'm just trying to measure out how long I want it to be with allowance for it to attach to the top. And once I had my hem at the right length I'm going to be folding it under so that I can create the scallops and that's a whole process so let's get into it. There are definitely in-depth tutorials out there on the internet that show you how to add a scallop hem to something, but this is my first try, so you're just gonna come along for the ride. Basically what I'm doing is figuring out how long I want it to be and making a stencil so that all of my shapes will be the right size. So this is not how I would have done it if I could do it over again, but I basically pre-hemmed the bottom and I'm going to be taking it up in as straight of a line as I can get, even though there's a curve on this skirt about an inch and a half, which will give me a little bit of leeway because I believe my little scallops are one inch. So I wanna have a little bit of extra room because I'm going to sew this down right sides together and then flip it inside out. Fingers crossed. So you can see here, I'm just following the line that I drew with pencil of the scallop shape over top of the right sides together. And now let's flip them inside out and see if it worked. And somehow it looks like this worked on the first try, but I'm going to be ironing it down and then finding that it's not flat enough for me because I haven't given enough seam allowance underneath. So then I'm going to top stitch it even though I don't want to. Since I'm making this a backless dress tunic situation, I'm going to be attaching the skirt to the top and just figuring out what the middle of each piece is and lining up where I want to attach them and just sewing all along the edge. With those two pieces attached, I'm using these very Barbie buttons to close the back. It's almost impossible to find the right color of small game to match this color. This is the closest I think we're going to get. I literally express shipped this guy and it looks orange in comparison. I hate color theory. Anyway, so I ended up going with this particular color and it's very see-through, so it's going to need to be lined. And I just found a little teeny tiny short pattern on Etsy and I'm just going to be making these to my measurements. And since I'm still on the figure out how to line things side quest, I'm lining these like kind of correctly, but spoiler, <laughs> spoiler alert, it did not come out amazing and the lining kind of hangs out because I think I made the lining piece a little bit bigger then the shorts piece, the exterior piece, and it's just not right. So I would say the dress lining, one point. Shorts lining, minus one point. Okay, and then next we have to make two very cute bows for the belt, and let's get into it. I'm gonna be using all these pieces. I'm basically going to be making two long rectangles that I'm going to fold in half and create the bows with. I cut these rectangles in half and then I start making my bow shape, which I'm just going to top stitch down because this part is going to be covered by that little center fold over piece. And here are all of the pieces separated and just sew them together and there you have some bows. Okay, now onto the hat. 
first, I get a lot of questions already about where did I buy this hat. The answer is that I made it. And second, I didn't know that cosplaying Barbie would mean that I would have to make so many hats. I have made three different hats for this, and the more I do, the harder they get, because they're kind of complicated. But let's get into it. So basically the plan is to use this hat that I bought off Amazon as a base and then make a little case for it out of this fabric and the other fabric that we used for the tunic dress shirt. And luckily there are sellers on Etsy who make sun hat patterns. So I just downloaded one of those and I cut that out for the top pieces, um, but I did use the tracing method for the circle because I wanted to make sure it was perfectly fit to the size of my hat. And for the hat covering part, I'm just starting to sew all of these little triangle wedges together. And this is what it was looking like before I attached the brim parts. <laughs> then I sewed together the brim parts to be one giant circle and cut out the circles for my head to actually fit inside. And then here I am just figuring out how much I need to hem off and putting pins in that place and then sewing it all together on my sewing machine, which I'm surprised that this worked guys, but it turned out pretty good. And here we go, it's the moment of truth. We're going to be putting the hat case on the hat and seeing how it looks. Okay, cute. And then her hat does have these little lines all around the inside of the brim. So I'm just going to be putting that through my sewing machine. And I don't know if this is related, but my sewing machine did break pretty soon after I did this. So I don't know if you're supposed to sew over plastic sun hats. And finally, the last piece is the seashell jewelry, which was the most difficult to source materials for. I was only able to find three of these pink shells and had to do the white ones for the others. And I got them off from some Etsy seller who does not have access to them anymore. And I can't find where these originally came from. So I am so sorry that I cannot help anyone get a hold of these because I can't even get a hold of more pink ones for myself. Before I was actually able to find those shell beads, I did a whole resin situation with these seashell silicone molds and resin, but it was really hard to get the color right. I think I did four different tries and still didn't end up liking the size or color. Then I was able to find those beads, but this is definitely an option unless we can find more of those seashell beads that I found. And after spending about a month making that costume, we're time traveling again to my family vacation in May. On the road. Here we go. Where are we headed? Headed to the beach. She looks like me. It's freaking me out. It's freaking me out. That was like a Wreck-It Ralph laugh. <laughs> no. no, a Seth Rogen laugh. Let we're, everyone know. Okay, so what, currently we're on vacation at Bald Head Island. Yes, look at that bridge. There's a nice bridge over here. It's bridging. All right, this is not a parking area, but this there's not where, really rules of this the road. Is, there's just no rules here. Okay, your one job is... One other job for you is don't lose the keys. My one job, I have all the jobs. <laughs> and here's a little behind the scenes of the photo shoot that I did with my sister in this bridge area. And then we went to the beach in a couple other locations. So just enjoy this BTS and we'll get right into the official grand review. <laughs> To the right a little bit. Le right. Sorry, oh. left. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, left. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit to the right. Just keep going right, left, other way. Just other direction. Yep, yep, uh, yep. One right. more step. Right there. So that wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed the behind the scenes look at how I made this outfit and I hope it was kind of a walkthrough for you. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, you can DM me at Costume Kens. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video for more Barbie content coming soon because I'm in my Barbie era. So that means that you are also in your Barbie era because you're on my channel watching this video. This is my fourth or fifth cosplay from the movie and it hasn't even released as of when I'm posting this video. So I have no intention to stop making costumes now because it's my new personality for the year. Hope you're here for the ride. And I think that's it. So, okay, thanks, bye.